The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, sixth chapter, text one through four, given by His Divine Grace A. C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on September fifth, nineteen sixty six, in New York. <laughs> Bhagavan, the other day, we have explained who is Bhagavan. Bhagavan is the last word of the Absolute Truth. <coughs> the Absolute Truth is realized in three phases. Impersonal Brahma, localized Paramatma, Supasaur, and ultimately as the Supreme Personality of God. Ultimately, Bhagavan or the Supreme Absolute Truth is first and secondarily He is all-pervading super soul and the Brahma Jyoti is all <coughs> So here it is said to Bhagavan Bhagavan. Bhagavan means the uh, proprietor of everything and uh, all powerful, all, uh, he has got all the, all famous. Nobody can be more famous than God. And all beautiful and full of knowledge and full of renunciation full of opulence, at the same time full of renunciation. Here in the material world you will find if a rich man has got great opulence, he is not liking to give it up. He is not like, he does not like to renounce. But in the Supreme Personality of Godhead he will find uh, full of all opulence, but at the same time full of renunciation. <coughs> the six qualifications, uh, proprietor of all opulence, all famous, all strength, all beauty, all knowledge, and all renunciation. Uh, in anywhere you find all these six qualifications in full. He is the Supreme Personality of God. <coughs> so here it is said, to Bhagavan God, the Supreme Personality of God is speaking. Uh, he is speaking means He is speaking with all knowledge. His knowledge has no flaw. Our knowledge has many, so many flaws. We commit mistakes. We are illusioned. Sometimes we speak something and at our heart there is something else. That means we cheat. And our experience all imperfect because our senses are imperfect. Therefore, I cannot speak anything to you. If you ask me, Sami Vidyan, what you are speaking? I am speaking simply what the Supreme Personality Godhead has said. I am just repeating the same word. Just <coughs> don't think that I am speaking. I am simply an instrument. A real speaker is the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is without and within. So what does he say? He says, Anasitam anāsṭhita karma phalam kārjam karma karoti ja sa sannyāsi ca yogi ca nā niradmi nā tāktriya anāsṭhita anāsṭhita means without any shelter karma phalam everyone is working expecting some result Whatever you do, what? You expect some result. Here, Bhagavan says, 
the Supreme Personality of God has said that anyone who works without any shelter of the Vedas, he works. Then if he does not expect any Vedas, then why does he work? Unless, suppose I ask somebody to work this way, uh, then he will expect something, some reward, some remuneration, some reward, or some uh, salary. That is the way of working here. But uh, Krishna prescribes the anasthita karma phala. One who works without any expectation of reward or reward, then why does he work? Karjam, it is my dream. It is my gift, not with a razor, but uh, as duty. I am duty bound to do this. Karjam karma karotika, in such a way, if somebody works, such and he is actually in the renounced order of life. There are four stages of life according to Vedic culture. We have many times explain to you that uh, brahmachari, grihastha, manaprastha, and sannyasi. Brahmachari means student life to be trained up in spiritual uh, understanding, Krishna consciousness, fully trained up, he is called brahmachari. Then after full training, he accepts wife, he gets himself married, and lives with family and children, that is called grihastha. Then after fifty years he leaves the children alone and gets out of home accompanied by his wife and travels in a holy place that is called Banapra, retired life. And at last he gives her his wife to the care of his children, grown-up children, and he remains alone. And that is called Sanna a renounced order of life. So these four orders of life there are. Now Krishna says that simply renouncement is not all. Simply renouncement is not all. There must be some duty. Karjam. Karjam means it is my duty. Now what is that duty? He has renounce the family life, he has no more botheration, how to maintain his wife and children. Then what is his duty? Ah, that duty is very responsible duty, ah, to work for Krishna. <coughs> Karjam. Karjam means it is the real duty. There are two kinds of duties in our life. One duty is to serve the illusion, and the other, another duty is to serve the reality. When you serve the reality, that is called real sannyas. And when we serve the uh, illusion, that is called maya. Uh, <coughs> now, either to serve the reality, or to serve the illusion. I am in such a position that I have to serve. My position is not to become the master, but to become the servant. That is my constitution. Everyone in this material world he is a servant. Nobody is master. One thinks that I am the master, but he is actually servant. Suppose if you have got your family, if you are thinking that you are the master of your wife, of your children, of your servant, of your business, uh, that is false. You are the servant of your wife, you are the servant of your children, you are the servant of your servants. That is your real position. Uh, any case you take, the president, he is considered to be the master of your country, but actually he is the servant of your country. 
So if you go on arriving that our position is always servant. So either we shall become the servant of illusion or we shall have to become the servant of God. But if we remain the servant of illusion, then our life is wasted. Everyone is servant of illusion. He is servant of nobody, but servant of illusion. He is expecting some profit. For serving, he is expecting some profit. But that profit is transient and illusion. Therefore, he is servant of illusion. And when a person becomes to his real senses, transcendental senses, or jnana, when he becomes actually the person in knowledge, then he becomes the servant of the reality. Because I am servant always, this way or that way. So knowledge means, then why shall I serve the unreal illusion? Let me serve the reality. If my business is to serve and nothing to be, and never to be master, always to serve, then why I shall serve the illusion? Let me serve the reality. That sense is called knowledge. So anasthita karma phalam, sannyas, renounced order of life means one who is in perfect knowledge. He can take sannyā. Otherwise, uh, if he takes all of a sudden the renounced order of life, uh, he will create misery for himself and misery for others. In full knowledge, that sannyā. So here, how that full knowledge is exhibited after sannyā, that is explained here by the Supreme Personality of God. What is that? Karjam. It is my duty to become Krishna conscious and to serve the cause of Krishna. Oh, that is my duty. That is my real duty. When you come, when you come to this knowledge, then we become Mahatma or the great soul. Vasudeva Sarvamiti Sa Mahatma Sudulla. You'll find in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhavanam Janmanam Ante Jnanavan Maam Prabhad. After many, many births, when a person, when a soul is perfectly elevated to the platform of real knowledge, transcendental knowledge, then what does he do? He surrenders unto me, Krishna says, he surrenders unto me. But why? The Vasudeva Sarvamiti. You are everything. Vasudeva means Krishna. This is Krishna comes. But Krishna says, such so Mahatma Sudhullava, such great soul is very scarce, really far. But any intelligent person, if he understands this philosophy, that my ultimate goal of life is to surrender unto Krishna, why not surrender immediately? Why shall I wait? Bhavanam Janmana Vante. Why shall I wait for so many births? The next stage is called real sannyā. Kārjam. Kārjam means it is my duty. I am not forced, but voluntarily, out of love, transcendental love. Ah. Just like mother serves this a child out of love. Ah, there is no question of salary or remuneration. The mother loves his child similarly. He can love the Supreme Lord in many ways. He can love the Supreme Lord as master. He can love the Supreme Lord as friend. He can love the Supreme Lord as child. He can love the Supreme Lord as your husband. Anyway, there, there are five different rasas or human in which we are eternally related with the Supreme Law. And when we are actually 
in the liberated stage of our knowledge, we can understand that our relationship with the Lord is in this way. Ah, that is called sarup ah, That is real self-realization. That is real self-realization. Everyone has an eternal relationship with the law. Either in the conception of uh, master and servant, or in the conception of friend and friend, or in the conception of uh, parents and the child, or in the conception of husband and wife, or in the conception of paramour and lover and, and beloved. So, these relationships are they are eternal. Now, the whole process of spiritual realization is to come to this stage, transcendental stage. This relationship with the Supreme Lord is pervertedly reflected in this material world. And therefore, we have got this relationship here master and servant. But because it is perverted, therefore that relationship is not master and servant. That relationship is with the uh, money and uh, benefits. There is no love. There is no love. Here in this material world, the master and the servant, uh, that relationship continues so long the master is able to pay the servant. As soon as the payment is stopped, the relationship of master and servant also stops. Therefore, that is not eternal. Ah, come on, sit down. That is not eternal. Similarly, ah, here also there is relationship between friend and friend. But in slight difference of opinion, the friendship breaks. Ah, the friend becomes an enemy. Therefore, it is perverted place. Similarly, the relationship between ah, come on here, uh, relationship between mother and son, a slight difference of opinion breaks the relationship, and the son becomes out of the Ah, relationship of mother, mother becomes out of it. Everywhere, husband and wife, uh, a slight difference of opinion, there is divorce, separation. So no relationship here in this material world is actual. All is remember that all relationship in this material world is part a reflection of that relationship which we have got eternally with the Supreme Personality of God. Uh, it is simply reflected, just like the sun sign, and sun sign is reflected in the glass, and that reflection comes to oh, oh, I In my apartment, at six o'clock, the sun sign comes from the uh, western side, uh, eastern side. So in the evening, the sun sign cannot come from the eastern side. The sun sign comes from the western side. But it is coming because it is reflected through a glass in the opposite house. This is the idea of reflection. That reflection of the sun sign is not real. But it appears just like sun sign. Similarly, all our relationships here are either as master and servant, or as friend and friend, or as parents and child, or as husband and wife, or as lover and the beloved. Any relationship, whatever we see here, that is the perverted reflection of our eternal relationship with God. So, when we come to that and, and, and the platform of understanding, then we are perfectly in knowledge. So when that knowledge comes, here it is stated, he said, the service of the Lord, Krishna Pantha said, karjam, karjam means it is my duty. Because I have got my eternal 
love relationship with Krishna. There is no question of remuneration. Of course, remuneration is there, thousand times more than uh, what remuneration we get here by rendering our service. Krishna, <coughs> thousand times, uh, not thousand times, because there is no limit. Uh, there is a <coughs> nice story of a great devotee, uh, Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj was a very powerful king, and he conquered over the heavenly planet. So the denizens of the heavenly planet, they appeal to the Supreme Lord to save them. <clears throat> that we are now conquered by the demonic king, Bali Maharaj. <clears throat> so, Bali Maharaj and Krishna, Krishna took the shape of a dwarf and went to Bali Maharaj for begging as a Brahmin boy. And uh, he approached him, Bali Maharaj, I want something from you. You are a great king. You are give, you give in charity to the Brahmin. So I want something from you. The Bali Maharaj said, Yes, I shall give you what you want. Now I want a, a land uh, of three, I mean, in the measurement of my soul, three soul measurement. That's all. So you are the boy, his, his soul was soul not very long. The Bali Maharaj said, what, what he will do with this small piece of land? And, but uh, he said, yes, that will surprise me. He will promise this three, measurement of my three palms land, that will surprise me. Then <coughs> Bali Maharaj agreed, and uh, by his two measurement of the palm, he covered the whole universe. Then he is asking, Bali Maharaj, now whatever you have got, you got, now it is finished by two feet, by two measurements of my palm. Now wh where I am going to keep my third, third one? Then Bali Maharaj understood that it is a favor of the Supreme Lord. He said, my dear Lord, yes, I have now lost everything, I have no other property, but I have got my head. Please kindly keep it. So, the Lord was very much pleased on him, and he offered, Bali Maharaj, then what do you want from me? Uh, no, I never expected anything from you. I could understand. He wanted from me uh, everything. So I have offered me everything that is finished. I don't want. Then Lord says, yes, but from my side, I have done something to offer you, and I shall remain as your order carrier servant in your door. Uh, so he remains always, just like we are sitting here. There may be some doorman. He is the Lord became his doorman. So that is the return. Uh, if we offer something to Lord, uh, that is rewarded in many millions of times. So we should not expect. The Lord is always uh, serious to return the service of the servant, of his devotee. Uh, so there are many devotees. This devotee, Bali Maharaj, is uh, surrendered everything for the service of the Lord. Uh, so he became a famous uh, king. Sarvatma Sapane Abhavad Bali Vayyasi. So now, Anyone who thinks that service of Krishna, a service of the Lord, is my duty, duty, he is the, he is the man in perfect knowledge. Sa sannyasi. Sa sannyasi ta yogi cha. And is actually yogi. Uh, we have heard the names of uh, so many yogis, but here Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he is actually yogi. Uh, who who has surrendered himself fully unto me, and he is engaged in my service as a matter of duty. That's all. Sa sannyasi sa yogi cha. Na niragni na ka akriya. Na niragni. Niragni means uh, those who have left home uh, in the, in the uh, Vanasam Dharma, uh, one 
He is a householder. He has to perform daily yoga. So there is fire. Fire. He is still in fine. Uh, and uh, the party is a fire worshiper. So this fire worship is recommended in Vedic literature. So Grihastha or the householder, they are expected to offer, uh, uh, I mean, say, sacrifice in the fire daily. Just sannasamiti prahu yogam tad vidhi pandava na jasam nasta sankalpa yogi bhavati karcha. That is very important point. Jan sannasamiti prahu. Lord Sri Krishna in a text of Jyom that whatever is known as sannas, renounce order of life, that is also yoga. Yoga system and sannas is there is no difference. Ah, because everything on the yoga system, the Bhagavad Gita is also known as yoga system. You will find here three kinds of yoga. Karma yoga, jnana yoga, and bhakti yoga. So that's why like, uh, you have got a clear case. Uh, to rise up to the fifth or sixth or tenth floor or, uh, or more than that, the whole circuit or the lift service is called Juva. Now, somebody may be in the uh, fifth floor, somebody may be in the tenth floor, somebody may be on the fiftieth floor, uh, but the same lift service is going. We check the lift service as the Juva uh, connection. Within the highest uh, uh, story to the down, uh, anyone who has uh, elevated himself to a certain platform, some, someone is called Karma Yogi, someone is called Jnana Yogi, someone is called Jnana Yogi, someone is called Bhattu Yogi. So there are different kinds of yoga in this construction. Otherwise, the, the leaf service, yoga service is the same. It is the difference between the elevation point. So similarly, just sannyasam meti prahu yogam tamadhi pandava. O arjum, pandava means the son of pandu, arjum. You can understand that what is sannyas and what is yoga, they are the same principle. They are the same principle how na, Na jhasam nasta sankalpa yogi bhavati kasana. Because without being freed from desire or sense gratification, uh, nobody can become either a yogi or a sannyas. Everyone is trying to have some profit out of his activity. There are many uh, yogis, uh, they perform yoga system, a teach yoga system for some profit. But that is not the idea of yoga system. Everything should be engaged in the service of the law. Everything. Whatever we do, either as ordinary worker, or as sannyasi, or as yogi, or as jnani, all our energy should be darkened to Krishna consciousness. That is real sannyas, that is real yoga. Anudukha muni yogam karma karana uchyate. Those who are just stepping on the uh, <coughs> staircase of the yoga system, for them karma karana uchyate, they must walk. In the beginning, nobody should stop working. Nobody should stop working. Just like you will find in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna uh, uh, requesting Arjun to become a yogi, but he never asked him to cease from the fight. How one can become a yogi at the same time remain a fighter? That's a practical example you see. Uh, Krishna is asking Arjuna, uh, Tatmar Yogi Bhava Arjuna. My dear Arjuna, therefore you become a yogi. 
But he are, at the same time, he is asking to fight. And now we know the yogi uh, sits down at a place and meditates and concentrates his mind and controls his senses. How is that? He is fighting at the same time yogi. Uh, this is the mystery of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, you can remain a fighting man. At the same time, the highest yogi, highest sannyas. How? In Krishna concept. You have to fight for Krishna, that's all. That is the secret. That is the secret. If you fight for Krishna, if you fight for work, uh, fight for work for Krishna, uh, if you eat for Krishna, if you sleep for Krishna, if you do everything for Krishna, then you are the yogi, you are the sannyasi, and you are everything. That is the secret of the world. It's a practical example. You see that Arjuna is asked, Tasmad Yogi Bhava Arjuna. My dear, uh, now you'll find in this chapter, Krishna will uh, instruct Arjuna how to become a Dhyana Yogi. That is meditation, Yogi in meditation. He will ask Arjuna in this chapter. And you will find, Arjuna will say, My dear Krishna, it is impossible for me. It is impossible for me. The system which you recommend for meditation is not possible for me. Ah. And actually also, although the instruction of yoga system is offered to Krishna in very full detail, you will never find in the history of Arjuna's life that ever he became a meditator. Ever. Uh, then how he became the most perfect yogi? Uh, that is that that we find in the, at the end of this chapter that <clears throat> one who is always thinking of Krishna. Yogi Namaki Sarve Sam Magdata Antaratmana Sadhyavan Vidati Juma Sami Vistatama Mataha. And Krishna when he saw that Arjun he declined. Then he said, My dear Krishna, my dear Arjun, you are the highest yogi. You are the topmost yogi. Why? Because you are always thinking of me. Yes. You have no other business than to think of. So this is the yoga system, this is the sannyas system, this is the jnana system, all perfection of jnana, yoga, jnana, whatever. Sacrifice, charity, and penance, all the recommended uh, activities for spiritual realization end in Krishna consciousness. So if you directly become Krishna conscious, then you are yogi, sannyasi, and everything. As it is stated here, sa sannyasi sa yogi cha. He is sannyasi, he is yogi, and he is everything. Oh. So this simple method to become Krishna conscious is the highest perfection of life. Therefore, the society established for Krishna consciousness. And the techniques are there in the Bhagavad Gita and there are Srimad Bhagavatam. Just try to accept this principle of life and your, this human form of life will be successful and perfect uh, by Krishna consciousness. So Arukha Munit Jugam Karma Karma Vichyate, those who are in the preliminary state, they should always work for Krishna. Uh, always, they must find out always some duty. Uh, what is there to work now for Krishna consciousness? Karma Karma Vichyate. They should not uh, remain idle for a second. Always find out some things. That is meditation. Uh, how I shall work for Krishna? Arurukha munet yugam karma karna muchyate, yuga rasyata sriva samak karna muchyate. And when one is advanced in perfect stage of that Krishna consciousness, then he may not physically work, but because within himself he is always working for Krishna. Samak karna muchyate. So in the beginning, 
uh, just like in uh, and uh, small boys and children, they are all uh, 24 hours engaged in the school. Otherwise, uh, they will spoil. So similarly, those who uh, are in the preliminary stage of Krishna consciousness, they should always engage uh, themselves uh, in the work. There are varieties of work. There are varieties of work. Now, those who are actually working with our society, uh, they practically do not find any time, any rest. There are so many work. Uh, they cannot finish it. Uh, they are nice, we have got work for Krishna Parasar. Uh, and we are happy to execute such work. And the students who are working with us, cooperating, they are also happy. You will find happiness. Uh, if you chant Hare Krishna 24 hours, you will never get tired. And that is it. You will never get tired. And any other material thing, if you chant or you repeat three times, you will get tired. Uh, it is practical thing. But if you go on chanting Hare Krishna 24 hours, you will never get tired. So if you engage yourself in the activity of Krishna consciousness, you will never get tired because you are acting on the spiritual platform. Uh, spiritual platform is absolute. The material planet platform is different. Uh, if you work very hard, then you get tired. So this is the exactly understanding of spiritual consciousness or uh, Krishna consciousness. Now here it is uh, very clearly explained. Jadahi nendriyakeshu na karmasu anusajjate sarva sankalva sannyasi yuvarhura sadachyate. When one becomes first class yogi uh, or when one is considered, considered to be elevated in the highest yogic uh, uh, platform or sannyas platform, that jada at that time when na nendriyakeshu a person who works not for sense gratification, that's all. Everyone works for sense gratification. In the material world, uh, everyone is working for sense gratification. Uh, they, everyone works here to get some reward, some remuneration for wages, and that is utilized for sense gratification. Now here it is saying, yoga rula, when one is perfect yogi, uh, that is explained here. That Jadahi na Indra Kesu, when one does not work for sense gratification, na Karmasuam Sajjate, he does not engage himself in the work simply for sense gratification. Uh, and Sarva Sankalva Sanyasi, and he has no desire to get any food. Because his desire in Krishna is already there. So he has no other desire. 